So Mayor and Council, good afternoon. Um, I have five items to share with you, but the first one I would like to, um, to share at the podium. As most of you are already aware, um, I've appointed Mr. Clarence Whitwer as the new water director. I am very pleased to be able to officially introduce him to you today. I know that he was introduced last week. However, because we didn't have a council meeting, this was the first time I could officially introduce him to you. So Mr. Wentworth, if you could please come forward. Um, some of this information you are probably already aware, but as part of the official introduction, I need to share it. Uh, Mr. Wentworth comes to us from the city of Houston, where he served as the Deputy Assistant Director of Wastewater Operations. He has more than 25 years of experience in the utilities industry, and he has extensive utility experience, including having a rare Class A license for both water and wastewater operations. That's the highest license possible with the most rigorous education and work experience requirements. The licensee must also be well versed in rules and regulations for public water systems as well as drinking water standards. He has managed water and wastewater treatment plants in various sizes. Mr. Wentworth also holds certifications in utility operations, emergency management, and shelter mass casualty management. Mayor and Council, I would like to first congratulate um, and welcome uh, Mr. Wentworth to the city of Corpus Christi, and I would like to allow him a few minutes to um, to introduce himself to you, um, but I'm very pleased um, to introduce the water director. Honorable Mayor Pro Tem, thank you. Honorable Mayor Pro Tem, Council, uh, thank you for having me. I'm not going to need a few minutes. Uh, you've already seen me trot it out to the media all week last week, and I'm kind of getting my head on now. I can get down to business. Um, I have been doing this a long time, as she mentioned. I've been. This is my 25th year. I enjoy it. This is an awesome community. That was my final reason when I finally decided. Uh, that was, I, I, I initially declined because it was a move and people get scared, I'm not gonna lie. But uh, this community is awesome. I am a, one of the things I think you can expect from me, just so you know, is very active community buy-in. I love the community. I am a very active Shriner. I have no, no problem throwing that down. Uh, you, you think of Shriner, you think of the stereotype, the guys with the little red hats and the cars. That is me. I have the red hat. I have the little car. You'll see me in the parades on my little car. So as long as there's not a water problem, otherwise I'll be working. <laughs> but uh, that is all I had at this time. I think uh, you've got a great team here. Uh, some of you may not know that, may not understand that. We have an amazing team. This is one of the best systems in the state, believe it or not. We've had some bad things happen, and we're going to try and get that turned around. That's all I have. Well, I think on behalf of the city council and myself, we are so glad you're here. And I think we should give him a round of applause. Thank you, Mayor Parker. And for the record, the citizens have been amazing. I've never seen such a welcoming community. Of course, coming from Houston area, you're, you're not expecting that anyways, but to walk down the street or walk down the shoreline and people say hello, that alone is amazing. So, Thank you so much. We're glad to have you. Okay, so that's item number one. I have four more to go. Yeah. Um, just a reminder, uh, Mayor and Council, and to the citizens, um, uh, I am still engaging with the community um, with conversations with the city manager. The next one will be Friday, February the 17th at 10 a.m. It will be held at the McDonald Public Library uh, at 4044 Greenwood Drive. Again, that's February the 17th at 10 a.m. The next um, item, uh, Mayor and uh, Council, I would like to talk about is, um, and it is actually on the agenda as it relates to water quality update. Um, I wanted to have this conversation, and I know that there will be uh, a lot more conversation regarding this, but this has to do with our water quality. Um, some of you were on council back in late July of 2016. You may recall it was shortly after the last boil water advisory 
Um, there was a task force uh, that was engaged. Um, they provided a report, but in, in late um, July, um, I brought forward an emergency um, procurement purchase of about $2.6 million, uh, of, and it was a list of items that we needed to, the staff needed to engage in to be able to help address some of the water quality issues. Uh, one of the issues um, really um, of that $2.7 million, about $1.6 million of that was related to chlorine dioxide. And I'm saying that because what I'm about to talk about is in relation to the chlorine dioxide. As part of uh, uh, staff is working diligently with our water consultants um, to try to find ways to address um, our water quality issues. And back in late July of 2016, one of the recommendations was um, to move toward uh, chlorine dioxide disinfectant. So the upcoming changes um, that I'm about to talk about are going to be temporary, but will result in an overall improvement to our water system. So what's gonna happen on Monday, March the 6th is the city will temporarily change water defectants from chloramines to free chlorine. This process was recommended by our city water consultant team and is endorsed by our Environmental Protection Agency and the Texas Commission on Environmental Quality, known as TCEQ. Now the temporary uh, chlorine conversion will also allow for a new disinfectant called chlorine dioxide to be added to the water to provide an additional layer of protection to the water system. And at the end of eight weeks, the original chloramine process will resume in addition to the new chlorine dioxide treatment. We believe that um, putting the chlorine dioxide into the system will be able to improve control of nitrification in the distribution system, um, and it will assist in producing a more robust disinfectant residual. The city will continue to provide a variety of information as we work through this process, and a lot of the information um, will be at cctexas.com. And as um, we continue with the water director and other staff as we're in the community, we will continue to talk about this process until we complete that process through the eight-week period. Uh, I wanted to take the time to talk about this because um, come March 6th, um, we will be moving from the chloramines to a free chlorine uh, for a period of time, and then after an eight-week period, uh, we will be back uh, on the chloramine. Um, I wrote this, uh, had this placed on the agenda, and have the appropriate staff present if you have any questions regarding this. Uh, we will make sure that um, the citizens are aware every step of the way what we're doing, but we truly believe that this would be a step in the right direction in helping uh, to stabilize our water system. So with that, I would like to actually pause on this one to see if council has any questions. Do we have any questions? Mr. Smith. Uh, Ms. Rose, uh, how will this affect spring break or the water quality during spring break? Council member, we, we decided to go with March 6th so that essentially the uh, conversion will be completed before spring break, so there should be no interference with spring break or the water quality. We'll just have a, diff a different kind of disinfectant at the time, which is free chlorine. Okay, uh, so Mr. Grimswell, so we won't have high chlorine content in uh, dur during this burn? Uh, no, we'll, we're always meeting TCEQ regulations right. for whatever disinfectant we're using, so. So we won't be running, knocking that 4% or 04 level then? Uh, no. Thank you. Mr. McComb. The 
public standpoint, other than announcing we're going through this process, will they notice a different taste or smell in the water so that they can be expecting that as opposed to just being surprised? They, they will, and the citizens of the city have been through a conversion, a couple of them actually. Um, you'll initially might taste uh, or have a, a smell of uh, like a pool, chlorine in the water, but it's essentially essentially that. Okay. So they just, I mean, that's going to be the normal, that's going to be communicated to the public. They may see a change, but not to be alarmed or anything. If I'm not mistaken, it's actually going to be in a notice, that public notice that we're sending out along that lines. Okay. Good. Thank you. Is it going to stink? I'm just curious. Well, your definition of, of stink to me, uh, a, to me, a pool doesn't necessarily smell bad. It's, it's just the smell of chlorine. So, I, I don't know how to describe. Well, is it going to be a strong taste that we're going? Is it going to be that noticeable? That strong taste? I don't. In my opinion, no. I, okay. I personally can't tell the difference. So, and I drink tap water every single day. Oh, women can tell the difference. Okay, okay, thank you. Any other questions? Oh, but if his hair turns green, you know it's in there. Yeah. Sure it's strong. <laughs> Mr. <laughs> Mr. Smith? Uh, and Mr. Grimsbill, on that note, uh, you offered to drink the effluent out of Greenwood, I did. Right? Okay. Uh, no, the last burn we had, though, I know some restaurants, they, they were affected by it, uh, and they were serving bottled water. So I think it's very important that we notify, have notification to them that uh, what to expect if they want to take other, to serve bottled water or something else. If I'm not mistaken, the notification is actually going out today. So that's essentially almost three weeks of, of notification before we actually start the conversion. And, and how long will the high residual levels be in the system? I don't I'm not sure if you're saying high residual levels. Well, the, the high chlorine levels and 4 ppm is what I'm... Um, again, uh, we're meeting TCQ regulations, so whatever, cool whatever TCQ regulations yeah. are is what we're going to follow. Okay. But that's a swimming pool level, I guess, is what we're saying. That that regulation, we can have a, a, an let odor the, that... I'm going to let our water quality managers, or our uh, plant managers speak to that. Okay. Sir, um, yeah, Rafael Martinez, plant manager. Um, I, I think earlier you mentioned, you, you actually mentioned the residual of 0.4. Or 4 ppm. Or okay, yeah, four, four parts per million or four milligrams per liter of chlorine in total is, is the, the it's, it's not necessarily, it's a secondary standard, for instance, but we're not going to exceed a 0.4. We're not allowed to by, at least for 25% um, of our samples can't be, can't exceed that. I, even if we were to leave the plant at that 4.0 level, you're not going to see it in Flower Bluff at 4.0. Um, to to elaborate, uh, elaborate on what Mr. Grimswell was saying, TCQ has set some standards, and for free chlorine, it's actually a 0.2 milligrams per liter. So uh, what, what I'm trying to say, we're, we're going to stay within 0.2 and 4 milligrams per liter of uh, free available chlorine. Does that answer your question? Yeah, it's it, it just... Uh, the smell in the water issue, odor, odor in the water no, issue. I, I just, I just wanted to want clarify because you at one yeah. point mentioned, say, are we going to stay at the high residual? Yeah. Well, I, I'm not sure what, what you were asking as far how, as how, how long will we be not over TCEQ requirements. But So if you're in a restaurant, how long would you expect to have higher than normal levels? Um, I, I have no way of determining okay. that because uh, um, as it, it depends on your taste. I, I've been doing this for 17 okay. years. I, well, I'm not talking about yeah. hi higher than normal that we would normally see it, in there. The, the residual, and I think that's where the confusion is, yeah. the higher than normal part, because yeah. we're, go we're going to disinfect water as we normally do, whether we are on chlorine or on free available chlorine. So if, if we're seeing a two and a half parts per million in, you know, on, on restaurant row of chloramine, you could expect to see somewhere in that same residual for free available chlorine. So we're not, we're not trying to, to increase the chlorine residual. We're, we're changing from a chloramine to a free available chlorine. We're not increasing the, the disinfection. We're just using a different um, disinfection strategy. It, it, we, Which, again, it, we have to follow TCEQ regulations associated with that, yeah. that type of disinfectant. Yeah, just, so just what can we tell our, how long can we tell our restaurant tours that we will We are going to be in this conversion for approximately 60 days. Right. So they will expect a difference in levels during that 60 days. 
No, they no. will not expect a difference in level. They will expect a different type of disinfectant, which is in the TCQ required levels. Right. Well, it's a, it's a distinct yeah. difference. They sure. they will have a different disinfectant than chloramines. They will have free chlorine, mm -hmm. but we're still going to maintain the re required by regulation the required levels of disinfectant. Right. And. and my, my point is not that, it's just to the layman out there, not, not getting into specifics, mm -hmm. when, how long will they be expecting a difference in their water? 60 days. 60 days, okay, thank you. Okay. Thank, you. thank you. Any other questions? I think what he's saying is our tea is gonna taste different for 60 days, right? Our iced tea. Yeah, just add more sugar. Okay, anyone so else? I just have a couple of more okay. items. I wanted to pause on that one because of the issue. Um, we actually have a water flushing program that I wanted to just kind of reiterate to you. Uh, as you're aware, we have about 1,900 dead end uh, mains in the city. Flushing hydrants and dead end mains is a process to ensure water quality, and it's also required by the state. The utilities department has a program for residents that's located near hydrants or dead end mains to be able to use the discharge water to irrigate their lawns. Citizens that's interested in participating in this water flushing program can call 826-1234. 826-1234 for more information. Uh, and the last item, uh, Flo East spoke about uh, briefly when she was here, the vessel turn-in program. That really was a successful program. It ended on February the 11th. Um, it was a partnership between the city of Corpus Christi, Texas Parks and Wildlife, and as well as the Texas General Land Office. And the, the goal was to properly dispose of boats while minimizing negative effects on the environment. So at the end of this year's vessel turn-in program, a total of 69 boats and 26 trailers were turned in. The response doubled the expected participation by all of the partners. Um, we thought that this was extremely successful and I was very pleased to hear uh, Flo East mention it, but that's the program that she was talking about, the vessel turn-in program. With that, um, Mayor and Council, thank you for your time. Um, Mr. McCone, do you have a question? Yes, ma'am. Ms. Rose, <clears throat> the Water Department is engaged in this flushing to on a periodic basis, I guess monthly or however often it takes. And water revenues, I think, from what I understand, are down as a result of people just not watering in the season and all other reasons. If we could combine, and as a result of that, reduced water usage because of seasons and we've been educated not to use much water, so we've really let our lawns and parks and everything kind of look bad. The citizens, I think, could contribute significantly and benefit the water system if they were encouraged to use water on their lawns. And I'd like for you to come back with a figure. I don't know what kind of figure it would be, but if we would offer, particularly coming into the, to the spring, while we can't give a cash refund, if we were to, if we were to give each utility user, say a, a five thousand gallon credit on on a billing cycle, that would encourage them one to use water on their lawns and and parks in their neighborhoods, which would improve the looks and qualities of their lawn. That would also help you in terms of your flushing the system. Uh, getting water out as opposed to just running it down the street into the stormwater sewer. Uh, to me, it seemed like the citizens could benefit if they were encouraged to do that, and if they got a 2,000-gallon, I think, is the minimum. If we gave them a 5,000-gallon credit on their water bill, one billing cycle, uh, I'm not sure what kind of financial impact it would have, but it may help in terms of them participating and helping keeping the system clean and reduce the number of releases that you, that you have on a periodic basis. I mean, it's just a thought. 
and I don't know what kind of dollar impact it would have, but right now we're not selling water, and that's part of the reason the water is getting foul. And so you're not losing anything if you give them the credit because there's, you're not getting the money anyway, but you're losing the water. So it could be put to good use on people's yards. We'll be glad to take a look at that. I know the last time this issue came up in terms of um, the different types of credits, um, we had to engage our bond council in, in that. Um, and as a result, we ended up not engaging in any type of credit. But we'll be glad to take a look at this suggestion. Um, but we'll need to look at it from a, f um, a full scale um, view to make sure that we are within the parameters of our whatever our bond council is, uh, shares with us. Or can, well, you, I, I, can you do a free day of, and you just don't charge them for one day of watering something? Yeah, I, As mentioned, we'll be glad okay. to take a look at it. Um, uh, I just, at some point, we've got to get common sense into the deal. I have no understanding why you have to check with bond council. If I can go out there and turn on a fire hydrant and run out 10 million gallons of water versus if I say, I'm going to give you credit, a thousand people, if you'll run the water out of your pipelines, I'm using the same amount of water. I'm, I'm generating the same amount of revenue. Why bond council has to get involved in this thing? There seems to be some kind of common sense, but I'm sure your legal advisors have told you that. But I think the legal advisors, at least from what I've read on some of these recommendations, <laughs> they can pretty much figure out a way to solve our problem. And I just would encourage you to do that. I mean, it, it just seems to me that the citizens, if they felt like they were participating in helping us solve a problem, we could really get a lot of buy-in. But we're not getting any revenue from them now because they're, they're, they're not watering their lawns, but yet we're dumping it all out which means we're not getting any water. So right. the citizens ought to benefit some something to, I think. We, we There's enough brains in the staff, I think, to figure that out, and I'm going to ask you to give us a report and we, back. we're definitely going All to right. look Thank at you. it. And I won't say I understand why you have to go to the bond council, because I wouldn't think you'd have to go to them if you give them a credit on their bill for something else if they were overcharged, but, but I know government's different. I get that. Mr. Smith? Well, and I think Mr. McComb's suggestion would be a great gesture to our citizens after all they went through on the ban and what we deprived of there. So uh, a along with that, because we do owe them a little bit. Thanks. Anything else, Mrs. Rose? Thank you. Done. Thank you.